Hello, people on the internet. This is episode one of How to Animate 51 Animations using Clip Studio Paint EX. Um, before we get to animating, I just wanted to make everyone aware of the notes section <laughs> for our canvas. Um, instead of breaking things down every time, I figured I'd add some little cheat sheets or notes on the uh, left side of the canvas. These are just things to keep in mind uh, for general knowledge. Um, if you don't know much or anything uh, about animation, especially 2D animation, um, these are helpful little tidbits. <laughs> uh, just explaining what keys, extremes, breakdowns, frames, uh, ones and twos, and anticipation are. There'll be more as we go along. Um, obviously, there's loads of things, but I'll include these in the side uh, note section right here, and I'll also uh, put them in the description so you can have while you're watching too if you want to go back. Of course, I'll also leave these up too, but sometimes I might get moved. <laughs> Um, I'll also include links to uh, helpful books and uh, other YouTubers who are way better <laughs> at everything than I am. This is not me teaching, so to speak. This is me just teaching myself, so I guess it is me teaching. Uh, but if you want to see how I animate in Clip Studio or just see how anybody uses Clip Studio in general, uh, then come to the right place. <laughs> That's what these are for. Um, with that, let's get to it. Um, I've already made, as you can see, the file. And if you'd like to see how to do that, I can add that in another video. Uh, but for right now, we'll just go with this. But when you start, an animation file um, you'll automatically get a um, animation folder with one cell already included in it um, and that's what this is I just renamed it to the uh, exercise that we're gonna be doing which as you can see is the traditional ball bounce in place but it'll originally just be named something generic like um, animation folder and it'll include uh, a blank raster cell or layer um, animation drawings are called cells so we'll try and keep that as a uh, uh, constant <laughs> so it'll get stuck in your head but it's generally numbered one uh, and we'll keep it as uh, one for now I like I said I'm not a professional this is just me teaching myself messing up constantly <laughs> so you'll have to give me a little bit of slack here <laughs> But yeah, when you start a new file, you'll automatically get the animation folder and the first animation cell, and you'll get the timeline. Now you can name the timeline before you actually start the file. Um, but I figured I'd show you how you can name the timeline while your file is already created because we're gonna make many, <laughs> 51 to be exact. Uh, well, probably not the full because we don't want the entire file to be that big. Um, but we'll be making more than one. So I figured I'd show you how to make other timelines. Um, so you can go, there's little shortcuts. There's a little, um, kind of looks like a sideways cassette tape to me. <laughs> but um, there you have little shortcuts. And uh, this one is, uh, you can create a new timeline. Or you can uh, click on these little horizontal lines and right here you can uh, do animation layer or and here you can do animation folder which is what this would be or if you want to do a cell you can which is what this is you can do you want animation cell or all the way in the middle where it says timeline you can do new timeline change settings frame rate uh, and the frame rate will always be 24 right now you can do higher or lower it just depends on what you're going to animate um, but right now we'll go to uh, change settings <laughs> and here we'll just name the timeline what we've named the uh, animation folder that way there's no confusion of 
where everything is. So we've got ball bounce in place. And uh, just so it's not too crowded, we'll leave it at two seconds for right now. But here is where you could actually set uh, how long you want your animation to be. You want it to be one second, two, ten, uh, several minutes, which you would do if you want to be a minute, it'd be 60 seconds. Um, and the plus is, like it says right here, any additional frames. So uh, say we want, like it has on here, two seconds with one additional frame, then it would be right here. So here's the one, and then right here would be our uh, one frame. Um, but we'll leave all that as uh, it is. And then we'll just hit OK. And here we go. Here's our timeline. And we'll go ahead and shrink that a bit. And right up here, we'll fit the screen. I know I have uh, the top toolbar and also down here uh, customized for myself um, but if you want to use these same tools and if you don't have them uh, customized yet you can also find them on the navigator uh, window you'll have uh, the uh, fit to screen there's the zoom uh, rotate you can reset flip unflip <laughs> the whole shebang what we're going to do is we're going to do the bouncing ball. <laughs> and um, down here, because obviously we're going to want more drawings. Um, to uh, add new drawings, you can either go to the Layers panel and hit either Raster or Vector. Uh, they'll both work the same way. Uh, you can still edit the uh, lines and vector layers. Uh, here, I'll show you. And to activate them in the timeline, you have to place them. You can either select where you want the layer to be and right click and then select from here, or you can go to this little icon, specify cells. It's got a little uh, chain link right here, and you can hit that and select, or you can hit those uh, horizontal lines again, and you can hit edit track and specify cells. You can also do batch specify, which if you've got like more than one, <laughs> uh, you can uh, click that and you can specify the value, which would just be their numbers and then however many frames. Or you can pick, like say you wanted to start at frame two or whichever number and end at the first one. You could basically go back backwards um, and then you can put how many frames you want in between each of those drawings and uh, the frames are these blank notches right here and they're all numbered on top of the timeline so you can see like this is and it'll even say on the top and also right here it'll say one plus one or one plus eight or wherever you put it and that one the number in front of the plus is the second. So we go here, and we've just got zero seconds. Um, but that's just because I start at the zero. Most people will put at one because it makes more sense. You know, I'm starting within the first second, I'm gonna start at one. But I put it at zero because that's default for me, and I think it's also default for the program itself. Uh, but you can change it in settings, it's okay. Um, but um, the zero would essentially be one second. Uh, and then one is actually two seconds and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> uh, but it's second plus frame number. So we're on the 13th frame of this second. Or we're on the 19th or the 8th. You get the idea. All we'll do is add the uh, second layer or second cell here. Right click and hit two. And just to show you that you can still use them the same, we'll add the vector layer. We'll add the vector layer here. And just to show you that it still works the same. Just made a little line. Then O on my keyboard uh, for the object tool. And you can still select the line like you would any other vector layer. 
So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And if you wanted to uh, delete a cell um, from the timeline, you can click on the cell, right click, hit delete, or let's undo that. You can select the cell, and then there's this little uh, icon here where it's uh, the chain link, but there's a line in the middle of it. You can hit that, delete that, or of course you can go here, edit track, and with it selected, you hit delete. <laughs> um, but let's get rid of the vector. We don't want the vector. We want a raster. And right click, number two. I'm going to guess, I'm not really good at naming, or not naming, uh, I'm not really good at numbering uh, my drawings. Basically, I'm not good at seeing ahead how many drawings it would take to get a certain movement. So I tend to guess and then add on from there. <laughs> so we'll say that it's going to take nine drawings to get our ball to bounce. So we'll just name this number nine and see it'll change down here. And we'll also write over here nine. And since this is going to be a key, like it says here for key drawings, key drawings are the storytelling drawings or poses. So they're your main drawings. They're your important ones. Um, so you circle them. So I'm going to circle that one. You don't have to make it so big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Eh. Okay. And then we'll go to the first one, and right here. And there's something else that I'm going to uh, put over here on this side, um, and that'll be our timing chart. And that's also something that I'm not very good at, but I figured I'd try and flesh one out so you can see what one would look like. So our timing chart, which usually um, will either look like this or it'll look like this. Um, I tend to do mine uh, like this. So the keys go on either end. So one and then since we're doing nine right here and uh, there it is. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm also using a uh, Wacom Intuos drawing tablet, and it's kind of small. It's actually about about the size of our canvas right here. Yeah, it is actually about this size. I just noticed that. <laughs> That's how big my uh, drawing tablet is. It's a very uh, handy little tool, but it is the first time I've used one. Um, it's not the very first day I've used this one. I've had it for oh, a couple months maybe, uh, but I'm still not used to drawing with it. <laughs> so if my uh, lines are bad, I'm blaming the tablet. <laughs> it's the tablet's fault, not mine. <laughs> I'm skilled. <laughs> but uh, for the timing charts, um, I'll uh, draw mine like this in, a, I guess, a vertical fashion unless they're always supposed to be horizontal I'm not sure I've seen them both ways so but I'll draw them like this and uh, the keys will go on uh, either end so even if like we had uh, multiple ones which we are going to um, it'll go so you'll have two with the nine and then we'll end on one so that's how uh, it'll be but um, actually here so we can leave this up Let's get rid of this because I was drawing on the cell and you'd only see that if I drew that on the other cells which I don't want to do that we'll just name this TC for timing chart and do like this and then one like this because this is where we're gonna start we're gonna start on key one and then we're going to end on key nine but that's key one is the ball going up or being stationary sorry so it's gonna start out here let's draw it out here so you'll see what I mean this is where our very badly drawn ball 
like I said, I'm getting used to this drawing tablet. This up a bit. And I would just hit M on my keyboard for the uh, selection tool. And you can hit O for the object tool and just move it up just a little bit because it's badly drawn. <laughs> um, but this is where the ball's going to start. And then here, oh, can't see the ball. Need to activate the onion skin. You can either press this little uh, icon down here or go to these horizontal lines and show animation cells and enable onion skin. And now you can see the drawings behind and if there were any ahead of the drawing that you're on. So we're going to go there and we're just going to go ahead and trace our badly drawn ball. <laughs> It does not look like a ball at all, but <laughs> bear with me. I said I wasn't any good. We'll just hit M again, and uh, I'm going to hold down Shift and the up arrow and just move the ball up a little bit. But that's nine, so let's deactivate onion skin. So here's where we're going to start. I'm going to start at one. And we're going to end for the first action at 9. But for the second action, we're actually going to end on 1. So that's why I'm putting 1 down here. Because this is where we're going to end. So this is where we're going to start. This is where we're going to end. Now, do you have to do these timing charts? No, you don't. <laughs> this is just to show you what one would look like if it was badly made. <laughs> um, but for this one, right around in the middle will be our fifth drawing. And that will be our first extreme. And now, as you can see here, what the extremes are... They're either changes in direction or contact points in movement, like the steps in a walk cycle. But in this case, um, it'll just be our um, middle frame. Um, now, some people I've read uh, will do it kind of in a different way, where uh, like the pendulum movement, you've seen the pendulum where it goes back and forth. They'll say that these... Uh, one and nine will actually be the extremes and uh, number five would actually be a breakdown um, that kind of confuses me a little bit so maybe I'm dumb <laughs> that's entirely possible so if you know how to explain that better let me know um, but I like to call these keys and then the middle one extreme and then the drawings in between here be the breakdowns um, which would be this one would be uh, doing math in my head four yeah because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a slow in and a slow out um, which means there's going to be two drawings so two and three right here that are closer together than uh, one and four. So one is evenly spaced away from four and four is evenly spaced away from five. Uh, and by spacing, I mean the drawing. So you can see, turn on the onion skin, go here, that one right here is fairly evenly spaced away obviously from nine but let's draw our extreme number five and we'll just label that five so we'll know what it is and um, you could like I did for nine is you could just trace uh, over either one either key 
and then move it to where you want it. But then that would just look like, you know, I'll show you. It'll just look kind of boring. Boom, 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 boom. Not really animated, I guess you could say. So we'll do what's called a uh, stretch. And the stretch is just giving the uh, ball uh, some sort of personality, I guess. Um, and it makes it look like the ball's actually moving, like there's movement. Um, at least that's the goal. But like I said, I can't draw. <laughs> so we'll just kind of stretch out the ball. And obviously, uh, like say we were animating a bowling ball, it wouldn't stretch like this. Um, even in a cartoon world, um, unless you were talking about like Roger Rabbit or Looney Tunes or something, then maybe. Um, but if it was a bowling ball, it would probably do something like a little bit on top and then round. Something like that. But we're saying this is a rubber ball. So the uh, material of the object you're trying to animate whether it's an um, an object like a ball or if it's a person like say if it was a uh, really skinny person or if it was a really fat person those things would determine how you uh, animate it so if it's like a really heavy set person uh, then they would jiggle a lot you know their bellies would go up and down and uh, they would also have more weight to them. So gravity would have more control over them than a skinny person would. <laughs> um, but that's not being mean. That's just how to do the animation. <laughs> but let's see how this looks. Turn the onion skin off. Do a little flipping. See, it already kind of looks like it's moving, like it's actually going up, down, up, down. Or in this case, up <laughs> and down. But we'll go here and we'll add our second extreme, which we'll want to go to our timing chart so I can show you. It will probably be, um, let's see, so doing math in my head <laughs> so 9 10 11 12 so be about 13 let's say but we'll go here and new layer or if we don't want to go up you don't have to go on the layers panel you can actually come down here and do new animation cell or hit those lines new animation uh, cell and reach a new cell. Uh, there we go. Should be about even. And we'll just put this 13. Now I'm going to probably do a bad thing, but I'm going to trace over my uh, fifth cell as best I can. <laughs> it's not very good, but it's a star. So we'll just do this, and I'll show you how you can um, trace over your own drawings. Don't do it on anybody else's. That's not good. That's not nice. Um, but you can trace over this, and then you can come to either scale, rotate, or you can go to the drawing and oops, hit uh, the object tool or O on your keyboard and right click on uh, the drawing and scale rotate and then over here on the tool properties panel you can hit flip vertical and that way the drawing is flipped and it kind of looks like it's going down yeah, take this off fifth one looks like it's going up this one Looks like it's going down, but let's get rid of that little bit. Get off of there. You don't belong there. And let's see how this looks. Now it looks like it's a ball going up and down. 
you know, and these are just the uh, basic drawings so far. Uh, let's add our number and then for extremes as you can see I've got it underlined uh, so that way you know what the difference is between a key drawing and an extreme drawing uh, or breakdown again depending on uh, who you are because some people won't have extremes because the extremes for them will be breakdowns it's a little confusing for me but that's just me <laughs> um, that's also number 13 don't forget that but this way you know which drawings go in what order because especially if you're um, in the business the animation business um, you don't want someone to just hand you here's this drawing and then here's this drawing do the animation and you're like huh but which came first what if somebody said this came first you're like okay and then somehow that one like that one's number two and this one's number one it's like what <laughs> what do you want me to do and uh, I've heard some stories where there were situations in the past like that kind of where um, professional animators would give uh, their uh, tweeners as uh, they were called I don't know if they're still called that but they're basically people who would draw the in between in between drawings um, for the animation and I know I don't have it on the notes uh, but tweens or in-betweens are literally just the drawings in between these drawings so they're the little tidbits um, you don't really see them that much in the finished thing they either help smooth out the movement or they slow it down um, but we'll get that later but um, some stories I've heard where uh, an animator or an assistant animator tweener would get like this and this like that was it or they would this and this and then they would be left with making these the breakdowns the tweens everything and then they would get all kinds of crazy things happening um, but yeah so that way you know which drawings go in what order um, so always stay organized <laughs> But let's go on to making our first breakdown. Um, so we'll put new animation cell. And this will be... This will be number four for us. Uh, so let's put here four. And onion skin. And... The circle will be kind of stretched because it's going. It's this drawing is going right into that, and the reason why it's not so close is because of spacing. Because it's a the the rubber ball, it's going to wind up and then it's going to go straight into action, which is this. So the slower parts of the action, which is going to be the wind up and then the just beginning into the follow through will be closer together and the more active movements are going to be farther spaced apart um, that's confusing I'm sorry <laughs> I'm trying to be clear but while I work too I'm trying to multitask <sighs> difficult and my ball just is not coming out to look like a ball it's coming out to look like a nose okay here we go Ballish, please, not newish, noseish. Of course, now I want to make the ball look like a nose and have it bounce like a ball, a nose ball. That would be weird. I may do that. <laughs> look out for that. <laughs> Okay, that's as good as it's going to get. Um, actually, let's get rid of that. I'm a bit of a nitpick. 
not a full-on perfectionist because I know my stuff's not perfect and never will be <laughs> that's okay though but there and we'll just back that up okay and this is going to be number four and I will just leave the breakdowns at just simple numbers and then when I do the tweens uh, I won't number them because I won't see them that much anyway and then I mean just imagine seeing a whole bunch of numbers right here don't really need to um, and all of this stuff outside of this uh, blue box will not appear in the final video um, just what's inside of the box so don't worry if you make marks outside of a canvas area so okay now we're going to you know, we're going to zoom in there a little bit I'm going to have this animation run on twos and as you can see here ones or twos uh, just means how long or how many frames the drawing right here will be exposed to the camera for and even though we're on a computer what's inside the box this is the camera this is the camera right here so if I want uh, this first drawing say or any of these drawings but if, say I want the drawing to be exposed only for one frame and then go straight to fourth that's how like you don't really get to see the first one very much but if I leave it right now it's at it's at six so we're not gonna leave it at six but this is sixes I don't think there is such a thing but <laughs> it's on sixes now so if we do it like that you see it longer you see the first frame longer so we're just gonna set things on twos which means I'm going to start the next drawing which is going to be number two <laughs> and we're gonna give it a little bit of anticipation and as you can see here is just the wind up to the action and how you can do that with um, almost anything um, is you can squish or stretch something um, so like say you're drawing a character and you want their head to turn um, but like they heard something like say they heard a loud bang so immediately their head is going to do several different movements you know uh, but you won't be able to see them all so the anticipation part is their head's gonna duck down a little bit then it's gonna rise up and look in the direction of the noise it's just the wind up to looking the other way uh, so for our ball the uh, anticipation of the wind up is the ball going down um, the intuition the anticipation is always in the opposite direction of where it's going um, at least from what I can remember <laughs> uh, if I'm wrong on any of this please correct me I'm all for that because I don't want to always talk out of my butt but <laughs> but you can't sometimes help it and I, that is not looking like a ball come on me I can draw maybe and we'll just draw it a little bit smushed like it's wound, winding up to bounce and let's hit O and move that up just a little bit because it looks out of there out of the frame okay now there's the anticipation turn off onion skin and really I don't need to turn off the onion skin because when you do a playback it won't show so see how it kind of smushes then goes up and also the uh, anticipation or uh, well the squish 
<laughs> the squish drawing also will work for when we go back into our final pose um, leave it on twos just right click where I want to put it and actually let's leave it on fours because we're gonna have another drawing in between those so number two and then we will see the ball has landed you know and so it goes splat and then it returns back to its original position so it winds up for the bounce bounce lands splats and goes back to its original position so here I'll turn that off it might be distracting because <laughs> we're not really gonna follow it but um and I'll I'll leave the uh, the I'll put it on two so I will go ahead and draw two and that way you can kind of see the drawings numbers go to all right and then for our third drawing new drawing or new cell and this one will be let's turn leave you on turn you guys off and this one will be right around here it's going to overlap all three circles so it's going to go like this. There we go. I can't draw circles. <laughs> Very bad. But that's okay. This is learning. This is really just to, like I said, teach me, but also teach other people. Okay. Three. <laughs> I forgot to turn them back on. <laughs> Okay, there we go. There. And really, you can move these. Oops, go on. There we go. If you want to move uh, cells on the timeline, just uh, hold, like click and hold, and then drag wherever you want them to be. So, right here, we've got. here for six and six will actually just be uh, a, a somewhat duplicate of three and I can show you how you can kind of probably bad practice <laughs> cheat if you don't want to trace is you can go over to the layer uh, layers palette click on the cell right click and then duplicate layer We'll just move that up here, number six, and then one, two, boop, and then right click, and then select six. And now we can uh, edit this cell without worrying about it changing the third cell, which is where it came from. So I'm just going to hit um, O on my keyboard and hold down shift and push up the uh, up arrow and this is going to go somewhat around here mm. let's see about there be good and uh, to uh, flip it to make it look like it's going down I can either like I said right click on the drawing and do scale rotate or I can uh, hit uh, the scale rotate button cancel that and actually 
because I know there's a drawing up there somewhere but out of frame um, hit the M on the keyboard or just select the uh, selection area or selection tool and then uh, select the drawing that you want to keep and then um, delete outside selection so it's around the middle of this pop-up or pop-down menu and that way whatever I didn't select will be deleted and then I can uh, change it up later um, but back to O and we're just going to hit uh, scale rotate and then we're gonna flip the drawing vertically hit OK get back my sketch pencil and this is number six there we go and number seven will be pretty much what uh, two is but uh, or not two sorry what three is two but it'll be in the place of two but we won't be able to duplicate it because there's no squashing that's going to happen um, so six seven will go around here do, 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 do so and let's zoom in here a little bit because our, the drawings are going to overlap each other because they're going to be slowing down so the squash or the stretched uh, ball is going to be slowly returning back to its original form I know that's too wide but I got one more drawing to do to fix it a little bit maybe let's see <laughs> and right about here Badly drawn. <laughs> and then get back up there. There we go. And then there's nine. And if you want to shorten or lengthen your timeline, you can grab this little blue divider and drag it wherever you want. So we're just going to drag it to the second frame with a nine. Let's go back. And there's our ball bouncing up. And stop that real quick. And we're going to put this back. Now let's. Now for this, we're going to right click and put cell 8. But what I want to do, which is probably again a bad practice, I'm going to extend how long nine is exposed let's start out with three might go more might go less but just kind of give it like oh it's stopped and then it'll go back down so we've got eight and then we'll do seven and then we'll go six and then it'll go into 13. So I'm going to click on 13 and also 2 and 1 and drag them closer. And also, these are not on the right. There we go. Now they're all on 2s except for 9, which is on 3s. And We'll go right back there and we'll turn off the uh, loop play just to see how it goes. And there we have it. One bouncing ball. And if we want to see it bounce multiple times, turn on the loop. And there we go. There's our bouncing ball. It's not very good. <laughs> but it's it's a start. 
it's not too bad and of course we can add uh, tweens in the uh, in between uh, uh, all these drawings and we can also put them all on thirds if we wanted to like we did uh, for nine I can show you how we do that just click up here where there is a uh, dividing line where, they, where you'll see a hand you'll see a little gloved hand just click on that you can right click and you can delete it here or make sure it's selected go here edit track and hit delete so we'll do that and then make sure it's uh, back to your starting frame and you can go to these horizontal lines again edit track and then we're going to go to batch specify and here we're just going to specify name of existing animation cell and our start cell is going to be 1 but our end cell is not going to be 13 because this is going uh, based off of the numeric value and 9 is our final drawing uh, not 13 so let's specify number of frames in between each drawing and we'll put it on let's say threes or here I know we'll do it fours for now just to show you kind of how much and then we'll hit OK and And see how long each uh, drawing is exposed to be played everything is on the same uh, frame rate I guess <laughs> it's exposed the same way but if we change things up let's put let's leave one at four and we'll change two by I'm going to click on three four five six seven eight and nine by holding down shift and clicking and then I'm going to drag and we're just going to leave two on twos and we're also going to change three click on all these drag we're gonna put two and three on twos and we're gonna put four on three And then we're going to leave five at uh, four. And then we're going to put six on threes. And if you want to deselect uh, one, but not all the rest, you just hit control and click on the frame you want to let go of. And we're going to put seven on twos and we're going to put nine on twos or eight on two sorry and then we'll just move this up a little bit now we'll play so now everything is at a different pace or is exposed at a different length and we can extend our timeline and if you want to extend a uh, drawing or a um, animation folder you just go up to the same place where we selected but you don't have to select it and wait for the double arrows to appear click hold and drag and you can shrink or you can lengthen however long you want it to be and here we'll just go a little this on for let's see one two three four let's leave it on for six frames let's see how that looks and then we'll just right click eight leave that on for two and then right click again and then leave that on for two and then right click and this one will be on for three so two three and then we'll hit five and this one will be on for four so one two three four yep 
and then we will go for four <laughs> and that'll be on for three right click three two and then one and we'll just take off the loop now for the five because remember five was not our second extreme 13 was so if you want to replace an already placed cell you can select the cell right click and then select the one you want or you can select the cell and then go over here to the specify cells icon click it scroll down and there will be your 13 or whichever cell so now and there we go must hit the loop and that's it that's our bouncing ball <laughs> uh, well hopefully the this was enlightening for everyone <laughs> um, but just to recap keys are the storytelling drawings so be one and nine uh, the extremes are the changes in direction or the contact points in movement. Um, in our case, I guess it would be the uh, five, drawing five or 13, as they change direction a little bit. And the breakdowns are just the poses that get from one extreme to another, or the highs and lows uh, for steps and squashes. So that would be two, three, and four, or six, seven, and eight. <laughs> and really, you could say that um, two could also be an extreme, um, and three and four could be breakdowns. Um, but again, those ones kind of confuse me a little bit, so I just kind of wing it. <laughs> Uh, but the frames for at least, um, I think it's for the same in Flash, and I've used Flash. I have not used uh, Adobe Animate, if that's what it's called. Um, but I think they're all pretty much standard as far as timeline design. Um, these little numbered notches are the frames. Um, so it's pretty safe to say that whenever you see a timeline for an animation program, these notches, if they have numbers on them, those are the frames. Um, so, as it says, frames are the numbered slots on the timeline. Um, and 24 frames equals one second of animation. So, I'll show you, we are on the second. That is one whole second of animation. Just the, the ball bouncing up is one second. Um, that's 24 frames. So if you wanted to make an animation that was just a second long, um, and you wanted everything on ones, that would mean you'd have to draw 24 drawings. If you wanted it on all of it on twos evenly, it would be 12 drawings. So probably pick 12. <laughs> Um, but anticipation is just the wind up to the action. Um, tells the viewer what's going to happen before it happens. So you see drawing one, the ball is normal, and then all of a sudden it squashes down. So you're anticipating it going up, which is what it does. It goes squish, boom, squish. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's our animation. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please horribly critique everything that I did wrong. Uh, aside from, you know, drawing the ball because that wasn't my fault. That was the drawing tablets. I'm obviously a professional artist. <laughs> totally. 
<laughs> but yeah, if I got anything wrong or backwards or flip-flopped or whatever, let me know in the comments and uh, hopefully you'll see me for the next one. All right? Toodles. <laughs>